two victims presumed dead by Richmond County remain at the center of major law enforcement investigations and the hearts and minds of their loved ones. It will take mounds of evidence to prove murder was committed in both cases, but the feat is not impossible. News Channel 6's Renessa Dubose with a special report on prosecuting murder cases when there's no body to be found. Nearly two decades separate Latanya Janelle Carwell and Preston Overton from a man named William Alvin Hamilton. As the Richmond County District Attorney and law enforcement worked to prove someone killed 16-year-old Carwell and Overton, who was 28, they will be working in the shadows of Al Hamilton's case that sent his killer to jail for life with no body. He's gone. We, we have no hope of finding him alive, but we would like to find his body. Preston Overton gone after picking a friend up one June night. I didn't want him to leave that night, but he'd already told DK that he would give him a ride. Our main goal is to recover um, uh, uh, Ms. Carwell's remain and the successful prosecution of this case. Latanya Janelle Carwell also gone. After Easter morning services, she was never seen again by anyone outside her Augusta home. But where are their bodies? The events leading up to and after their disappearances left behind traces of evidence. But will it be enough to prove the men and women behind bars charged with the crime did it? Everybody we encountered getting ready for this case when we would talk to a witness or whatever always started by saying, uh, well, y'all aren't charging this guy with murder, are you? Well, it's happened before. A murder conviction with no body. News Channel 6 sat down with Bobby Christine, a local lawyer and judge who in 1999 served as chief counsel on a case similar to Carwell and Overton's cases. William Alvin Hamilton. Like the present day cases, he was missing for a short time before presumed dead without ever finding his remains. This man, Rodney Richardson, is serving two life sentences for the crime he thought he would get away with because he did away with Hamilton's body. People lie. Uh, witnesses lie. Families lie. Suspects lie. Uh, forensic evidence does not lie. Sergeant Dwayne Piper, now over Miami Gardens Special Victims Unit, was working with the Richmond County Sheriff's Office Homicide Division when Al Hamilton's case hit his desk. Everything about him being missing was out of character for his life. Al Hamilton lived and worked in Augusta. The 46-year-old was known to be a nice man who loved to work on cars. At night, he worked at the discotheque lounge, which is exactly where he was last seen on the night of August 14, 1998, leaving the business in his 1987 great Ford Tempo. Him being gone and his car being gone and his family and social network having had no contact with him since he was last seen leaving work uh, was suspicious. Investigator Piper says only one thing connected Hamilton with Richardson, a woman, and it was a love triangle that led to Hamilton's death and Richardson's lifelong time in the pen. You know, they can't find his body. If they can't find his body, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I see what you're saying. You, 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 but I don't know what to talk about, Shelly. Why not? Why not? Yeah. Evidence number one, a police bug in the home of Shelly Sharp. Richardson's ex-wife and Hamilton's girlfriend helped lead detectives to the truth. Was Al Hamilton murdered by Rodney Richardson? But let's explore the circumstantial evidence used in court first. A barrage of witnesses closed money in Hamilton's home in the 1900 block of Elizabeth Drive. Presumably, he was headed there after he left work. Piper says Richardson was there waiting. Boxes of evidence in the district attorney's office reveal Richardson was at Augusta Manor, his ex-mother-in-law's place off Mike Paget Highway, around 11 o'clock on the night of the 14th. After a threatening argument over the phone with Hamilton, Richardson asked a neighbor for a ride to his mother's house. The directions he gave the neighbor, down Highway 56 to Finnessy Road to Old Louisville Road and Elizabeth Drive, put him on the same block Hamilton lived. It was an ambush uh, where Richardson, uh, based on the timeline of when he was dropped off an hour or uh, a block or so away from the uh, crime scene, was uh, shortly before Al Hamilton got off work. Al Hamilton was killed in his home, and Richardson set it on fire to cover it up. But instead of getting away with it, he locked his own jail cell with a blaze. The heat and the fire actually seared the blood stains and the blood spatter uh, onto the 
drywall and the soot then covered it and preserved it perfectly. While there was blood in Hamilton's home proved to be his through a DNA paternity test taken years earlier, Piper says law enforcement still needed to prove it was enough blood to kill Hamilton and that Richardson was there too, dealing the deadly blows. It's a simple mathematical equation, uh, taking the width and length of the uh, impact stains, and these have to be medium velocity impact stains, which was, uh, were, which is indicative of uh, being struck with a blunt object. Witnesses told law enforcement Richardson was looking for an aluminum bat a week before Hamilton disappeared. It's the object Piper says could have been used to cast off blood stains in the home. Working with the GBI, Christine proved murder in court. Medical examiner from the uh, GBI crime lab was able to testify that the quantity of blood found in the home and the nature of its array um, was likely uh, brought about by repeated and severe head trauma, battery to the head, sufficient to have killed the victim. In addition to being dropped off near Hamilton's home hours before he was to clock out of work, police placed Richardson in the Elizabeth Drive home with two other pieces of evidence. Coins found among Richardson's belongings were part of a collection that Hamilton owned. Sneakers that he tried washing had a strong odor of gasoline. These pieces of the puzzle worked for Al Hamilton. Tomorrow, we will look deeper into the pieces that could help law enforcement put Carwell and Overton's killers away for life, too.